Queen Camilla wears a poignant royal heirloom to commemorate D-Day. Today is the 80th anniversary of D-Day, the day when Allied forces mounted the largest seaborne invasion in history to begin the liberation of France during World War II. Members of the royal family have attended several events to mark the anniversary, and today, the King and Queen were in France, as were several more British and European royals, to honour the sacrifices of the men who fought on that remarkable day. King Charles III and Queen Camilla were in Versailles in Normandy on Thursday for special commemorative ceremonies in honour of the anniversary. Welcome to Royal Pancakes. If you are new here, please don't forget to subscribe and click the notifications bell, so you don't miss any news about the British monarchy. There, they paid a visit to the British Normandy Memorial, which was unveiled three years ago on the 77th anniversary of the landings. The memorial was constructed after a veteran pointed out that Britain was the only allied nation without a dedicated memorial in Normandy. The limestone memorial is inscribed with the names of 22,442 people from more than 30 countries under British command who were killed in Normandy during the spring and summer of 1944. Of those people, 1,746 people lost their lives on D-Day. Their names surround a bronze sculpture by David Williams Ellis, which depicts three soldiers coming ashore during the landings. They were joined on Thursday by French President Emmanuel Macron and his wife, Brigitte, at the memorial in the small seaside town, which overlooks Gold Beach. Both the King and President Macron delivered remarks at the memorial. King Charles spoke in both English and French during the ceremony. He said, 80 years ago, on D-Day, 6th of June 1944, our nation and those which stood alongside us faced what my grandfather, King George VI, described as the supreme test. How fortunate we were, and the entire free world, that a generation of men and women in the United Kingdom, and other allied nations did not flinch when the moment came to face that test. He added, on the beaches of Normandy, in the seas beyond and in the skies overhead, our armed forces carried out their duty with a humbling sense of resolve and determination, qualities so characteristic of that remarkable wartime generation. He concluded his remarks with a simple message, our gratitude is unfailing and our admiration eternal. Queen Camilla was joined by Madame Macron as they placed flowers at the memorial during the commemorative service, with the blue sky and the blue sea providing a vivid contrast behind them. During the service at the memorial and the luncheon that followed, the King and Queen were able to meet with several veterans who took part in the landings 80 years ago today. Among them was 99-year-old Richard Trelease, a veteran of the Royal Navy who was seated beside Queen Camilla during the service. They also greeted several more veterans after the service's conclusion. Here, Camilla greets 98-year-old Henry Rice, who arrived on Juno Beach as a signalman five days after the start of the invasion. Poignantly, this is perhaps the last major D-Day anniversary held in the presence of men who served during the operation. The handful of surviving veterans are in their late 90s and early 100s now. For them, the day was especially important. The Telegraph reported that several veterans broke into tears earlier as the King paid tribute to the remarkable generation who fought on D-Day. Reports also noted that, after the commemoration service, one veteran handed the Queen a white rose in a touching mark of respect. For the anniversary, both Queen Camilla and Mrs. Macron wore all-white ensembles. Queen Camilla's coat dress featured metallic embellishments on the collar and sleeves, and she wore accessories in neutral tones. The choice to wear white during a military ceremony of remembrance in France reminds me of the late Queen Mother's famous white wardrobe, during a state visit to France held shortly after the passing of her mother, the Countess of Strathmore, in 1938.